George of the jungle, strong as he can be. Holy cow, did you hear that the Federal Reserve cut interest rates to zero and that everything in the world with an interest rate attached to it is now at zero? That, that's the phone calls that I'm getting. Uh, why, why aren't mortgage rates at zero? So that's what we're going to be discussing in the creditjungle.com today. Thanks for joining me. This is George Anderson. And this, you know, this went into the news. This, this happened a few weeks ago. And the big news is, is that Federal Reserve cuts interest rates to zero. Well, they never really talk about specifically what rates. Okay, well, the rates that, what, there only was one rate that was cut to zero. The rate that was cut to zero is the discount rate. And the federal funds rate was cut to 0.25, to a quarter of a percent. So let's just talk about this real quick. And I, I don't want to get too deep on this. But the federal funds rate is if you have Wells Fargo Bank and Chase Bank, the banks are required to maintain some reserve requirements. In other words, they can't lend out every single dime that they have. They're supposed to have some minimal reserve requirements. However, those were relaxed as well with all the stuff that the Fed's doing right now. But the federal funds rate is if, if Wells Fargo is short a few million bucks and Chase is to the plus side a few million bucks, since they're both FDIC member banks, uh, the one bank can borrow from the other bank overnight. Okay, so that federal funds rate is from member bank to member bank and it's a 16 hour loan. It's 16 hours, okay? So, because they have to balance their books every night. The discount rate is if Chase is short and Wells Fargo says we're short too, and then they go and find out that everybody else that they would normally like to go to first, then the lender of last resort, you'll always hear that referred to is that the Federal Reserve is the lender of last resort, they can go to the discount window of the Fed and say, you know, we had a lot more money go out than we did come in today, and so we're a little bit short and we need to borrow money from the Federal Reserve for 16 hours. And that rate would be borrowed at the discount rate, which is 0%. So the same question would be asked, well, if mortgage rates aren't at zero, then why aren't payday loans at zero? Or why aren't car title loans at zero? Well, the reason is, is because there's several factors that go into determining the interest rate of any type of a loan. But basically, we're looking at the, the collateral, we're looking at the credit capacity of the borrower, and then we're also looking at the term of the loan. So obviously, a short-term loan, a 16-hour loan, is going to have more favorable terms than a loan that is 30 years. So most of your mortgages are going to be a 30-year loan. So hopefully, that helps you understand a little bit of the pricing there. The second one is the collateral. So what is a bank's collateral uh, to be able to pay back money that it borrows overnight? Well, they're looking at having more deposits and more money come in. And then, of course, they can always borrow from the Fed. So just the fact that they are a member bank and have that capacity to go and draw on an almost unlimited line of credit in a short-term squeeze, that makes that their capacity as a lender a lot different and their collateral as well. So, and, the, and then the other one is, is, is how about the performance of the loan? Well, one of the things is, is that as people start getting excited that, you know, this forbearance issue ha has come up and the forbearance is the last numbers that we got, there was a report that they've gone from about two and a half percent to now about three and a half percent. This is of all the loans that are out there. Ask yourself a question. How anxious would you be willing to lend money on a mortgage on a home to somebody who didn't think that they have to make their payment for a couple months or maybe up to a year? So that risk factor, the term of the loan, the collateral being the property and the capacity of the borrower, and then also you know, the ability to repay, all of those things are creating a little bit more of a risk factor for mortgage-backed securities and that's why mortgage rates are not at 0%. So hopefully that makes sense. But one of the interesting things is, is that if you went and if you tracked, and there's a graph, and I'm going to find it, and I'm going to have it posted and uploaded to the video here. So the person that edits my videos, because I'm not smart enough to figure out YouTube, I'm going to have him put that in there. But if you look at a graph of the 10-year bond, which is what tracks most closely to mortgage rates, and if you look that and overlap that with what the Federal Reserve does, 
you will find that they most often work against each other. When the Fed lowers rates, typically mortgage rates go up, and the vice versa. When the Fed is raising rates, mortgage rates go down. That's based on long-term expectations of what they think that the Fed's immediate action right now is going to have on the market six to 12 months down the road. And so longer term investors who are looking at 30 year, 10 year maturity securities like treasury securities and mortgage bonds, they're saying, hey, the Fed's doing all this stuff to stimulate the economy. We might have some growth and some inflation down the road. So maybe we don't wanna be long on some of these longer term maturities. So anyway, so anybody who's had some economics would understand some of this stuff, but you don't need to, to understand the, the basic principles that we discussed. So hopefully that helps you understand why mortgage rates are not at 0%. Thanks for coming into the creditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson. Remember, you can push button, get mortgage professional, and I would love to talk with you personally about your situation. Have a great day.